Good evening and welcome to the November 21st, 2016 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Karen, can you please take the roll? Mr. Duperry? Here. Ms. Hendrickson? Here. Ms. Saunders? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Ms. Auglis? Here. And Mr. Bealey? Here. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to formally welcome Mr. DePerry and Ms. <coughs> Hendrickson to the board. And it's uh, great to have a full board and glad we're able to get a couple meetings in with the full board before we head into the, the holidays. So. Um, just for the record, a couple of housekeeping mm -hmm. notes. Number one, uh, we do not have minutes to consider for this meeting. As some may recall, we had sort of a short turnaround between these last two meetings, so we didn't have an opportunity to prepare those for this meeting. Uh, the second uh, note is that item number six on the agenda, 3 East Grand LLC, has been tabled uh, from this agenda. Uh, there were a couple of items uh, that were not uh, resolved <coughs> uh, to the point where they were ready to appear this evening. So <coughs> with that, uh, we will move on to item number three on the agenda. <coughs> Elena Frank requests an advisory opinion of a miscellaneous appeal application to the Board of Appeals for 3 Griffin Road, Assessor's Map U33, Lot 51C. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as you just noted, this application is before the Board for an advisory opinion to a Zoning Board of Appeals. Essentially, 3 Griffin Road is a grandfathered, non-conforming, single-family home um, on Griffin Road. Uh, the current zoning is the TVC, or the Town and Village Center Zone, which does not permit single-family homes, but this home was built in sometime in the 40s, and so when it was built, it was conforming. Um, so uh, essentially, our ordinance recognizes that there may be situations such as this, that a use that was once conforming may become non-conforming, <coughs> does provide opportunity for there to be additions, expansions, um, such as the requested, provided they meet a certain sort of threshold. And sort of in essence, you know, the, the standards sort of say, does it, is it compatible with the neighborhood? Um, and there are some other detailed um, uh, review uh, criteria as well, but um, sort of I'll leave it at the essence of it. Um, so with that, you know, the applicant's seeking to add a garage and a shed and a porch to their existing <coughs> single family home. Um, you should have received comments from our zoning administrator, who also is the staff liaison to the Board of Appeals, uh, just on this item as well. Um, with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it back to you. All right. Thank you. Uh, before we move to any board discussion, we do have the opportunity for public comment. If anyone would like to come on up and just give your name and address and uh, keep your comments to five minutes or less, please. Good evening. Um, my name is Alina and Ryan Eckley. We are Wait a minute. owners Excuse me. Is, is the microphone working? Okay. Yeah. Sounds Thank like you. it. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay. And you, you are the uh, the applicant, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. We are um, owners of the three Griffin property, and uh, we would like to present our um, future projects of improvement of our property. But before I go into this, uh, into this. Uh, Please uh, let me to start with a story. Back in 2011, Ryan and I we purchased the property as a first time home owners. The property had a very bad situation, pretty much run down, uh, neglected, abused, and forgotten property. We took a pride in this project and uh, wanted to bring the life back for this house because we um, thought the home is in beautiful neighborhood, uh, residential area, peaceful um, property, and, and, and I thought it would be perfect for us uh, to start a family. It required a lot of work, which we took our time to do that. We did tremendous amount of improvements, which is new roof, new siding, new windows, new doors, the inside and out all updated. We took into consideration before we went forward with, uh, with this project uh, of updating and renovating the thought how beautiful the neighborhood is. And we wanted to match the style and the look and appearance <coughs> of the property to the neighborhood. 
we considered the color pal uh, palette and the style of the house and all the upgrades, the plants around, the shrubs and trees. So by doing such a great um, amount of improvements, we brought the life back to the property and we were able to reach our goal and proudly say we did it. It looks beautiful. We have received tremendous amount of thank you from our uh, neighbors, which are absolutely beautiful and very supportive people throughout the whole entire process. They have been tremendous help for us as well. So going forward, we would like to continue to do such improvement because it's also increased the value not of on our, our property, but a property of the whole entire neighborhood because the house was absolute and eyesore. The property was not taken care of and now it's shining. So with that said, we would love to continue improving and increasing the use of the property as simply storage, like a shed, to store the garden tools and the lawnmower rather than having it unsightly along the house stored. So, and the garage for proper storage of vehicle and the property. And I would like to um, emphasize that our neighbors, about in neighbors on Orchard Street as well as Pine Point, as well as on the Route 1, do have garages and the sheds and the porch. So we would like to continue the flow of the whole entire neighborhood and match with, uh, with the rest. And um, the porch would be the last project. It's just for a static look, just to tie everything together and make it all pretty, beautiful, and sightly. Um, that's, and a lot of neighbors um, are going to do the same projects and some of them already in the process of those type of improvements. And also I would like to say that this project will be taken in 2017, at uh, the same time when Mr. Risberry will be developing the street, which we're very excited to um, welcome him in our neighborhood because that will be absolute uh, um, improvement to um, our street and the neighborhood in, in entirely. Um, and doing together, I think we would work as a team and with other neighbors who will be joining us with the same project, we'll make a beautiful um, effort to tie it all together and turn the unsightly street to the most beautiful street in the neighborhood and match with Orchard Street and Pine Point. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Appreciate that background. Is there anyone else who'd like to comment on this? All right. Seeing none. Um, anyone have any comments on this? Starting over here. No? Um, I just want to make um, a ask a question about the fact that um, we do have this um, 36 unit senior apartment building that will be abutting this property at the terminus of Griffin Road. And um, I think that could be an issue, and I would just like to hear, you know, anything that the applicant has to say about that. The property, the 36 unit, is being built, not behind us. It's been sideways. Uh, if I would have a plan on, or map to show, it would be not abutting us and we have a tremendous amount of land to step back and be uh, in compliance with all the um, um, footage away from the property, I don't think it's going to be a problem. You're not concerned about this? Absolutely not, because my neighbors are already in process of such um, improvements and my neighbors are building and right now <laughs> the, the garage and it's not a problem for them. I don't, I'm not, I'm not as concerned about them as I'm about you. No, it would not be a problem because okay. our property is set back a ways away from uh, future development. Because it is 36 units. Yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else over here? Uh, <coughs> I'd just like to say I'd like to compliment you on your presentation. I think you did a nice job. Thank you. Um, and I really don't have any issues with this. Thank you. Robin? No? no. Anyone else over here? Thank you. Um, I'd also like to 
thank the uh, the applicants <coughs> for the presentation and uh, and uh, kudos to you for the work that you've already done and um, best of luck going forward and uh, we're sending the VBA a, a unanimously um, favor favorable opinion here so best of luck thank you Item number four, Halo LLC requests a site plan review for 300 Roundwood Drive, Assessor's Map, R38, Lot 1104. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to just note the applicants before you for a site plan amendment to a previously approved site at 300 Roundwood Avenue. Uh, this is in the B2, um, the regional business district. Um, the site was originally approved in the mid to late 80s. Um, and the applicant is now requesting approval to expand the um, parking lot. Uh, we've had staff had an, a series of meetings with the applicants as well as their representative. Um, and, and one of the issues that we sort of flagged during those meetings is typically our ordinances and, and this board typically seek to reduce the amount of impervious area where possible. Um, but you know, based on their operational needs, they feel like they need more parking than what the town's minimum standards are, which certainly happens from time to time. Um, to that end, uh, in talking with the applicant and their engineer, we, we did ask that they sort of take a look at uh, ways of addressing water, uh, their stormwater quality uh, type issues um, as well as quantity. And so I think they've endeavored to address that and you should have received staff comments that have some uh, detailed pointed questions about that and we, we we're interested to hear the applicant's responses to those. Um, <clears throat> Let's see, so I think that's sort of the issues around that are sort of the principal comments we had. We had some other uh, more minor comments regarding sort of lighting details, landscape details, but um, with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it back to you and um, Steph and Angela in particular are happy to answer questions as they come along, particularly here. Thank you. And I will hand it over to the applicant's representative. Thank you, members of the board. My name is Todd Gammon. I'm with Blaze Civil Engineers. I'm here tonight with the owners of Bay Capelli, Melissa Vigu, and Nancy Cartonio. We're very excited to be here tonight. They, the subject parcel is in the Roundwood Commercial Subdivision off Payne Road. To give you some bearings, the, we're right behind New England Hi-Fi and adjacent to New England Hi-Fi, House of Lights on Payne Road. We're between the hotel and New England Hi-Fi in the Roundwood Subdivision right off Roundwood Drive. Parcel's about one and a half acres uh, in size. In April or May of this year, they purchased the property from the Mugallian rug business that's been there since 1987. Mm -hmm. And they are moving their um, salon where they currently um, have a business on Payne Road and they're renting and they purchased the building to move this over operationally. Uh, fairly minor site improvements, which is really surrounded just in enlarging the parking lot, as Jay mentioned, um, a little bit of uh, lighting for safety and security. Uh, the beneficial part is it's a beautiful building. It's about 8,600 square feet. Um, they had a beautiful landscaping around the building since 87. Um, the, there's an existing pond that serves the impervious area. One pond serves for the whole subdivision. There was a certain amount of impervious area that was assumed per lot that size that pond and I've had um, some communication <coughs> with Angela on the stormwater. If we tried to go above and beyond what would maybe typically be done, the extra 30 parking spaces that you see are out behind the building and we're treating, <coughs> we're going to treat 100% of the impervious area one inch over that with an underdrain soil filter that will be discharged to an existing catch basin in the parking lot um, that exists today and <coughs> everything will flow down to that pond and eventually everything gets down to the Nunsuch River. Um, minor, we were fairly happy with the minor staff comments in terms of, I, I think there was uh, an item on there for maybe a split rail fence adjacent to the soil filter to ensure somebody doesn't plow into it, um, which we will do and revise the plans accordingly. Um, there was also a few other plan notes that are fairly minor. There's some granite curbing that exists out front of the current building right as it sits today. Uh, the contractor is going to bring that to a vertical face, cut the pavement and restripe as necessary. 
um, and then Angeline actually spoke today about the filter. I've reduced the size of the filter a bit so we can limit the, uh, the amount of trees that we have to cut. Um, just to show you one thing with going all back, this, this provides us another 30 space, 23 years. Do you mind swinging the, either grabbing the handheld mic? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. You have to turn it on on the bottom. The bottom. <coughs> so there's um, 23 existing spaces here today. We're adding 30 out back. You can see, I wanted to make sure everybody understood it's a nice um, wooden buffer between the lots. We've got a couple of light poles. And they're going to go in a little bit of underground electric, some sidewalk. We're going to continue the granite curbing out front. We're going to use some sloped vertical uh, concrete out back with a little bit of sloped concrete around the edges. Um, no utility work. And um, for the most part, fairly minor services for the rest of the site. Happy to take your Thank you. Um, <coughs> Before we move to board discussion, is there any public comment? All right. Um, <clears throat> Robin, you have anything? Yeah, sure. Um, Todd, are you seeking any waivers at all on this? Uh, no. Okay. So, does the, the lighting meet standard and everything? Angela, there's no changes to lighting, right? We've added some lighting. You have added some lighting. Okay. Good. Excellent. Um, and I'm wondering about, were you able to find any of the maintenance records or work with the landowner regarding the larger water quality control structure that the whole development feeds to? In terms of volume two, Todd, um, how did you reconstruct? You said you sort of minimized the footprint a little bit <coughs> of the storm water, of the underdrained soil filter. Yep. Um, does it still have the same capacity, or did you did you did you lose some of the capacity um, for the 25-year event kind of a thing <coughs> for that? What I originally done there's a little bit of wooded area mm -hmm. off site that you don't need to treat the can into it. Actually, factored in some for that. Mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, that's what I was getting at. So you might have made it a little deeper in order to exactly. close it in. Great. And the wooded area that it discharges to, Todd, do you know if that's on the the premises or is that an off-site or is that an off-site wooded woody buffer area? Yeah, off-site. Okay. So do we, I guess this is a question for staff then, do we have any, um, and do we have any um, concern with additional flows to the off-site parcel? Uh, that was one of my concerns was looking at the pond because quite frankly we haven't gone in there and, and looked at it and to have um, additional flows added to it and so that's where the staff comments and looking at having Todd go out and actually inspect it and like I said um, we can look through some photos but I'm more than happy to go out and take a look with them too mm -hmm. and we can staff can kind of deal with that I think on the on the other end I, I might add that the um, with the original sizing of that pond mm -hmm. sometimes they make impervious assumptions per lot because they don't know exactly who the tenants are going to be 
they have they factored into the original permit 70% of each lot with the impervious area. Mm -hmm. So we're short of that number by about 20,000. Okay. So we're way under what the original pond was sized for, so I'm comfortable with that. Great. I, w I would just propose that uh, you continue to work with staff regarding the, the off-site uh, increase to discharges. And um, will this project have a pre-construction meeting? Do? Great. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rachel? You have anything on that? No, I, the only thing I had checked was the pond question. Okay. So, Great. thank you. Rick? No, I'm good. Okay. Thanks. Nick? Uh, I think I'm okay. Yeah. Roger. I'm all set too. If uh, Angela's all set, I'm all set. Mm. <laughs> Angela, no pressure, happy. Angela. <laughs> <laughs> if Angela's happy, we're all happy. Um, <laughs> I do have a question about. Um, the opportunity to enhance the landscaping with the parking field by modifying the transition to the rear parking field, um, which is hard to see without mm -hmm. you showing it to me. Yep. Okay. Okay, so we can call that as something that's been noted by the applicant <coughs> and will be changed. Okay. Um, <coughs> this is my only question. Everything else has been addressed, and I think it's a wonderful expansion of a company that's already doing very well in Scarborough. Yay, let's hear it. And uh, they want to stay in Scarborough, so we don't want to cause any problems, but we want to make sure that we're, you know, meeting our standards. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I agree that um, this seems to be in pretty good shape and I appreciate the, the updates and also have confidence in staff to be able to sort of sort through any remaining loose ends on stormwater and landscaping. Um, and uh, yeah, without belaboring it further, uh, we do have a draft motion here that I'd like to put forward. Um, see that it does <coughs> include language um, stating that it's conditioned upon the applicant working with the staff to address those comments. So that would that would include the landscaping. Thank right, you. Right, that would include landscaping and and, and any loose ends on the on stormwater. Uh, before I do make this motion, I I meant to note this at the top of the meeting um, that uh, both Mr. Beely and Ms. Saunders are now full voting members. So. Um, with that, I move to approve the application of HALO LLC represented by Blaze Engineers for the parking lot expansion at 300 Roundwood Drive. Based on the direction provided during this deliberation, this approval is conditioned upon the applicant revising the plan set in accordance with staff and peer review comments. The revised plan set may be reviewed and approved by the planning department staff. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Good luck. Piece of cake. You can leave now. <laughs> You're dismissed. Unless you really want to stay. Right. Right. It's riveting. Fascinating. <laughs> Moving on, item number five. Merle Hartford Painting LLC requests a preliminary subdivision review for 93 Running Hill Road, Assessor's Map R35, Lot 18. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As just noted, this is a subdivision application in the Running Hill <coughs> slash Gorham Road Transition District. This is the RH2. Um, our subdivision review process is a little different than our site plan process. There's really a two-step approval process here. We have a preliminary plan which the applicant does demonstrate that the uh, land is, um, can meet our standards and is generally capable of, of doing all things it's supposed to do. And if the board's generally comfortable at preliminary, um, their <coughs> next step would be a, a final approval or a final application, which sort of details the remaining items. Um, with that, you'll receive staff comments. This is a, um, you know, not a whole lot of infrastructure involved with this subdivision. We have two lots off existing roads, so our comments are a little less than you might typically see for a, a subdivision, but we did note a few items that should be addressed and considered. Uh, one, there's uh, some dimensional standards that need to be reconsidered for lot, I believe it's uh, 
uh, lot two of the subdivision. Um, another item that the applicant had requested is a, a waiver for a nitrate analysis. Um, we did want to bring to the board's attention that this property is right on the edge of our aquifer protection overlay district, um, and so that may be part of the board's consideration. Um, also do want to note that this property is in the Long Creek watershed. This is an urban impaired watershed that principally most land in the urban impaired watershed is sort of in the South Portland area part of the mall district, but we do have a small portion up here on the uh, sort of upper end of Running Hill Road that's in that district. And so uh, we have an arrangement with the watershed district staff to enable them to review the uh, materials, which they've done and provided a uh, round of comments for board consideration. It was sort of nice to see that their comments echoed what our town engineer and staff had put into our comments as well about wanting a little more detail around site grading uh, and erosion and control, uh, erosion and sedimentation controls at the appropriate time. Um, uh, let's see, uh, also just note that you will have also received comments from Goral Palmer um, on town's behalf. They did a peer review of the traffic. Um, they didn't find any significant issues on site. And again, just some more <coughs> detailing. Um, so with that, Mr. Chair, I would turn it back to you. Thank you. And I will hand it over to the applicant's representative. Thank you. Good, e good evening. Uh, Steve Blake. I'm with BH2M. I'm here representing Merle Hartford. Um, so just real briefly, um, this the, the lot is, it's about a three-acre lot. It's at the corner of uh, Running Hill Road and New Road. Uh, there is uh, there is an existing house on the lot now. Uh, that will remain, and that is on lot number number one. Uh, so the the total subdivision is is the existing house on one lot, and then two new proposed lots, uh, one with frontage on New Road, the other with frontage on on Running Hill Road. Um, <clears throat> there is no public sewer uh, out in this particular area of town. Um, the existing house is on a septic system, which would remain. Um, and then we had proposed the, um, the two additional uh, disposal systems for, for the new lots. Uh, there is public water. Um, there's public water in Running Hill Road, so the, the, the new lot with frontage on Running Hill Road will, will tie into the, the water district's main. Uh, there's no water in New Road, so the, that particular lot would be on a private domestic well. Um, we, we received um, a few staff comments, um, as Jay said, uh, comments from uh, Long Creek and comments from Goral Palmer. Uh, we've, been, we've been through most of them um, with, the, with respect to the traffic comments. Um, we, we've looked at sight lines for the driveways, at least the, the approximate areas, and uh, they're, they're well over the required standards. Um, and we've also been in touch with Maine DOT about um, any nearby um, high crash locations, and, and there are none. Um, I know there were a few comments um, specific to stormwater, um, <coughs> and, and what you'll see from us uh, for our next submission is uh, some con conceptual lot layout plans um, that show the, you know, the total impervious area the total proposed impervious area and total proposed disturbed area, um, as, well, as well as some additional erosion control details. Um, so, thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any public comment? All right. <coughs> Susan, would you like to start off on this one? Sure. Um, I think the applicant has made it clear that he's paid attention to the feedback from staff. And this is just a, an opportunity to um, do a preliminary review. Um, I do want to make sure that um, the uh, watershed situation is being very closely monitored. Um, we're seeking some waivers here, and I just want to make sure that I know, I know staff will be on top of that, but I want to make it public record that we want to pay a lot of attention to that. Um, the frontage you've taken care of, it seems to me, and um, the traffic the, the, the traffic thing is a little confusing only because I've been here forever and I still don't quite understand at what point we jump in and say, yeah, but um, the whole situation about crash data and no discussion of sight lines and so on, uh, it seems as if you've answered all of these, but I just want to make sure the staff is happy with the responses. Um, 
And the final thing I wanted to do it was it that was a traffic analysis. We don't anticipate okay. Whenever I see the word waiver, I want to make sure that we know which side we're on. Um, I think it's a great idea. I have no problems with it in general. Um, I think that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Roger? <coughs> okay, thanks. Um, <coughs> um, I, I want to get a clarification from um, from <coughs> Jay on, um, on his comment about the frontage on Lot 2. And in particular, I noticed that, for instance, there's 150 and 50. Now, with that that easement, does that eliminate that 50? Or can um, that 50 be counted to cover the 200? Yep, so the easement area for the for the septic system for the existing house doesn't come out of the lot area. The issue is that on Running Hill Road, um, the lot needs to carry 200 feet of frontage. So they have their frontage at the right-of-way line proper. But what you'll see is immediately the lot line starts to taper in. Sort of, and what the Board of Appeals actually has found a number of years ago is that the frontage, the 200 feet, needs to be carried at least to the depth of the front yard setback. So in this case, I believe it's 30 feet, if I'm remembering right. Um, so that 200 feet at the property line needs to be carried back that additional 30 feet, and then it, the lot can start to taper in. Um, and so that's really the issue. So it's, I'm thinking it's probably something they, you know, since the applicant controls all the land, it probably isn't too, um, <coughs> too onerous, but sure. certainly uh, something needs to be addressed. Actually, uh, on this plan, we've, we've made a, a minor adjustment to that particular lot line and we've added another higher pin. Um, so essentially for the first first 30 feet, um, these, these two property lines are parallel. Okay. Um, I, I'm just kind of curious uh, if I could ask the homeowner, I mean the property owner, was he, was he aware that he was in the Long Creek watershed area and also sitting on a flash portion of the aquifer? Just kind of curious. <laughs> just, just come up to the uh, podium, please. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, just come up and briefly introduce yourself. <coughs> Thank you. No, I wasn't aware of that. I, I lived two doors down on New Road for the last 20 years. So um, you know, I saw this opportunity. You know, I, I enjoyed uh, fixing properties. The, the house was very long I've been in and out for seven weeks, or six days a week. I've stepped up for I didn't know anything about the water. I know the water's good there. You know, uh, one of my neighbors, uh, Dr. Pease, said that uh, the water's slightly hard there, but it's really good water in Mount Hurst. So I've been drinking for 20 years. But I know I, somebody just drove uh, well right next door and they went down and they have good water. So <coughs> but I can't even see one on one, one of them. I, I, was, I was just kind of I, curious because... Yeah, no, I didn't really know about that. I, mean, I grew up in South Pool and I used to swim in those ponds there behind my house there. Um, I know it's all spring fed. Yeah. I know we've been out there. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I'll tell you a real quick story. I don't know how much to do it, but Mr. McIntyre across the street been on both sides of the road for many years. He said one day in 1959, when they were in there digging the turnpike, they bring it, it's all sand there. But they dig for the turnpike, and he said he had four dug wells across the street. And a crane fell over and went into the into where they were digging. They never found the crane again. He told me this to be an honest man who's been story many times. <laughs> and that all his well went dry that day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much food, but that's what he told me. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I guess as long as staff is satisfied with, you know, the watershed concerns and the, um, the aquifer concerns. Uh, I'll leave that up to them. But other than that, I have, I'm all set. Well, if, if I might just, because, so one of the, at this point, it sounds like we're hearing, or at least I'll speak for myself, and if Angela's hearing something otherwise, it sounds like the applicant's given uh, good consideration to our comments. Obviously, we haven't received any revised materials, but I think that's 
part of why this process sort of has that preliminary final step. So I would generally say at this point, and again, you know, um, it's, it's worth noting that Angela's comments are sort of more in depth than mine are in this case. But if the board's generally comfortable where things are tonight based on, um, on the direction things are headed, the board can consider preliminary approval or you, or, and then we would really work out the final details and understand the remainder of it at the next application. Or if this board has questions and you're not comfortable getting to preliminary, that's at the board's discretion and we could, you could table the item. We, and we can consider uh, preliminary approval without necessarily making a decision about the waivers at this stage. Correct. Right. Yep. Thank you. Um, I want to echo that. <clears throat> I think one of the greatest things that's happened to the planning board in a while is that we have this incredibly wonderful engineer on our half who is going to take over and <clears throat> make sure that it all comes out right. <clears throat> and I trust that. And as long as I know that we can do any changes at final, I'm very happy with doing it with preliminary. Thank you. Roger, do you have anything I'm else? Thank you. Nick? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so I, I um, as far as the waiver request goes, I, I'm on board with the, the traffic analysis. I, I do need clarification, though, on um, the stormwater and erosion control. And are you intending to build single-family homes and then sell these, or is, are you <coughs> selling off the land? Um, <clears throat> I, I believe, well, you, you're going to sell the lots. Uh, the only reason I ask you is I wanted to know from staff what opportunities for enhancing erosion and stormwater runoff is there on the next level of this, mm -hmm. which is if it, it sounds to me like there's probably some, some need for some protections in place given its proximity to, you know, the aquifer and things like that. I'm not clear on um, how extensive um, the the applicant would have to provide you guys information to where you're comfortable to letting this slip over to the homeowner side or the single family lot. And then on top of that, I'm not clear what opportunities the town has for tools in place to help with stormwater and erosion control once it's in a, you know, a single family hand. Yeah. So, so I think there's, there's sort of two layers to answer to that. Procedurally for this board, I think, and we've done this actually uh, fairly recently with another sort of smaller subdivision. There, the board could consider a condition of approval if we get to that point um, that requires that with each building permit, they provide uh, specific site grading plans, erosion plans, stormwater plans. And that's where, so I think procedurally, we, we have dealt with that administratively at this level. And then I can have, ask Angela to sort of weigh in on what that might look like more specifically. Yeah, we've done it in the past, and what it's usually connected to is with the building permit. When they come in, they give me grading and erosion and sediment control plan that we go through. I think um, this is a little more sensitive in Long Creek, and that's where <coughs> the comments back from the district, really, it was good to see that they were kind of echoing that, that we're kind of doing it the right way, I, I would say. And really a lot will come out of what Steve provides for final and saying this is, um, I think he's on the right path, that's exactly where I would tell him to go, is um, give us what your best guess is. And I understand things change, but really just giving us the building envelopes and this is how much areas we think could potentially be disturbed. And that would really dictate what they would, I would look to see for erosion and sediment control on the sites and how they deal with stormwater. Um, him giving us a, a general detail um, sheet of here's some typical um, erosion sediment control details that I can go back to when they come in with a building permit and say this is what we're going to do. It's already in the plan set saying here's your typical um, BMPs that we would look for and it's all spelled out for the contractor at the site. So I think um, I think it's heading in the right direction and I think Steve and I are on the same page with that. Um, so I think also when it comes into the code office, it's, it's helpful that we're all in the same office mm -hmm. <laughs> and that um, if there is issue, especially with this being a sensitive watershed, that um, I can go out to the site and we can, we can watch it actually unfold as, as it needs to happen. I hope that answers your question. I think that, that helps. Um, so, I mean, from what I'm hearing right now, I'm not sure I'm 
100% comfortable with a complete waiver of any stormwater erosion control at this stage. That would be my sentiment on that. Outside of that, this is pretty straightforward, splitting the, splitting the lot up, so mm -hmm. okay. Good, thank you. Robin? <coughs> yeah, for full disclosure, I wasn't part of the, the Long Creek um, review, so I don't think there's a conflict here. But I do um, also feel echo um, what Mr. McGee said, I'm not fully supportive of a waiver at this point, um, even though there are administrative controls. Um, I think the sensitivity, as Angela said, is um, uh, is what it is. And um, I think that that needs to be taken into account. So I'm not necessarily, um, I haven't seen anything here to warrant um, the waiver, I guess. Um, um, the other thing I guess I'm, I'm wondering about is, is the nitrate analysis. Um, I believe there was some type of waiver as well, requested a waiver from submitting a nitrate analysis due to the fact that the site is not within the aquifer protection overlay. Um, these boundaries aren't fixed. Um, and con again, considering the the area, I'm not necessarily in favor of that, but other other than that, I think the project is on the right trajectory and compliment you on that. That's Thanks. All we have. Rachel? Yeah, um, I also compliment you on, on the development. I think uh, there's some thought going into utilizing this, this space in a positive way, but I, I do have a question. One of the staff comments is, indicates that the location of the wells on abutting properties should be identified to ensure they're not within the well exclusion zones. As I look at the proposed outline here, it's clear that for lot two, it's town water, correct? But for lot three is uh, the one that's on running row, uh, excuse me, that's on new road. <coughs> A lot of that is in the well exclusion zone, uh, and I'm not clear where actually a well would go, given the amount of the land excluded. So we might want to look at that in addition to uh, noting the wells on abutting property. Sure, yep. Um, we, we've located them. Um, we've actually, you know, the one that we've located are on this land, there's one that's property here, and there's one back here. Um, so the existing wells <coughs> have an adequate setback from, from where we're And on lot two, a uh, lot three itself. Yep. So um, there, there is a, a window towards the front of the lot, and there's a small corner towards the back of the lot um, where there's uh, adequate setup for, for the lot. Thank you. Okay. All set. Good. Thank you, Rick. Anything? Yeah. No. Good. It's fine. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think I'm pretty much on the same wavelength as my uh, fellow board members overall here. I think you know, it's definitely, this is heading in the right direction. Um, I, based on what I know and don't know at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm not inclined to uh, favor the, the, uh, the waivers related to the nitrate plume, plume analysis uh, or the stormwater erosion control measures. That's not to say that I you know, I, I couldn't be convinced based on additional information that we get. Um, but as has been noted, um, particularly related to the nitrate analysis, the aquifer, those aquifer boundaries are, are really just approximations and they're kind of fluid, so to speak. Um, so I think um, there's an argument there for erring on the side of caution. So, um, you know, we'll sort of bookmark that and, and plan to revisit that going forward. Um, beyond that, I think we've pretty much addressed addressed the uh, questions, and I appreciate the input of staff, including the town engineer. Um, and with regard to the Long Creek watershed uh, district, I think it's great that we we have those sorts of kind of inter jurisdictional agreements um, that we can make sure that we're protecting those regional resources that aren't really sort of transcend municipal boundaries. So I'm glad we were able to get that input and get that in time for, for, this, for this meeting. Um, 
so again, we've got some details to work through as we move forward to the next stage, but I think I'm hearing that folks are fine with preliminary subdivision uh, approval. So uh, with that, I don't really have a fancy uh, motion for that, but I would move that uh, we approve um, preliminary subdivision request of Merle Hartford Painting, LLC. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? Nick? I think what we'll look to is at final, we can deal with sort of understanding. It sounds like the board does want more information about stormwater, maybe in what I'm hearing and, and board members let me know if I'm not necessarily needing sort of a full hydrocad analysis or storm, but at least sort of the more information that was echoed in staff's comments in, Long, in the Long Creek District memo is really the type of information you're looking for and, and seeing a lot of heads nodding. So. If that's sort of where the direction we're headed, I think. So we don't need to mention those. We don't have to mention those. I think what we'll do is we'll pick that up at final if okay. if it's still warranted. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we still have a seconded motion on the table. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All right, all in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, item number six was tabled. Uh, so moving on, do we have a staff report? Um, I just wanted to make mention, um, so board members know those who have been around anyway, Rachel and Rick, welcome. Uh, we, uh, we started doing sort of a, I don't know if series is quite right, but trying to get together as a, as a board sort of informally as workshops um, mm. every few months. And typically this board try, likes to try to get together around the holidays, either sort of an end of year, Thing. So, I'm wondering if board members are available before our next meeting for a workshop. Um, on. I think what we would focus on is as we're starting to move towards updating a comprehensive plan, I was going to ask Karen Mar Martin, who's the director of SEDCO, the Scarborough Economic Development Corp, to come and sort of talk about what's happening in the town that they're seeing, um, sort of talk about yeah, those type of issues. I'll leave it at that. Um, it. So if folks are generally available, we will plan on doing that. Uh, probably meet an hour or so before the meeting. I'll work on some details okay. and send out an email. Um, so that is what I have to report. I don't know if Angela has anything to Can I just add, um, most of you guys know that Ron Mazur was um, liaison for planning boards for our transportation committee, which mm. uh, Dan Bacon and I staff, um, and we will be looking for a planning board Happy member patient. to join us. If anybody wants to start thinking about that, you might want to let me know what that means. What that means for our new members? Uh, transportation. Our transportation committee. Um, we meet the fourth Tuesday of the month. Um, it's usually generally a shorter meeting, maybe an hour long or two at the most. Um, doing some comprehensive planning around pe bike and ped. Um, we were doing looking at improvements at Oak Hill that have recently happened. Um, there's some interesting new striping down on Eastern Road. If you've been down to see that, that's a, a part of what the Transportation Committee has done. Um, we'll be looking at our master planning of Pine Point area, which includes East Grand Avenue. So it's a pretty active group. Um, they get their hands in to things, and um, it's, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's a good group. So I just want you guys to consider it. All right. Thank you. It actually reminds me with um, with Ron stepping down, the vice chair seat is currently open, and typically the board sort of deals with new um, or updated <laughs> appointments at the start of a new year. So just something for board members to be thinking about. We do have one open position, and you know whether we want to do a whole slate in December or January, or if we want to just take up vice chair in December, we can okay. be thinking about. Thanks for that heads up. A clarification on that new term starts January. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Uh, so new term starts soon as your yes, yeah, their their calendar year. Right. Yes. Um, procedurally, if you don't have a vice chair, is there something that has a secretary taking spot if we have a vacancy? Uh, I don't know that that's spelled out in the rules. We might get that clarified. But, but <laughs> last time I wasn't so sure. So. Take a look. All right. Good question. Yep. Thank you. Uh, is there an administrative amendment report? Um, 
this is an administrative amendment report, so to speak, but just an update on the Asian Fusion restaurant out on Muzzy Road. Mm. Um, they requested a one-year extension, which is uh, um, the ordinance allows for site plans to get one-year extension, provided they demonstrate good cause. Uh, and the way they went. So <laughs> they've, they've been granted a one-year extension of their approval. Um, so that is all I have this time around. Right. Thank you. Um, plenty of board correspondence. Um, <laughs> We have, uh, I think everyone has um, copies of uh, some additional emails that have been received since the last meeting regarding the three East Grand Ave Conroy's Garage proposal. Um, we have several here. I won't list them all off, but again, as is our policy, all these are entered into the record and all board members uh, review copies of these and we do appreciate the, the input and the feedback. Uh, any other? Correspondence to report. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, any general board comments? Okay. Once again, I'd like to welcome our new members, and um, again consider the uh, the uh, other opportunities that have been mentioned here. Uh, and I hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving. And with that, I move to adjourn. Thank you. All in favor. <laughs> Thank you. Good night.